White peace and love, everybody. I'd like to welcome you back to Mantis Views 29. This is part three of Inside a National Treasure. Again, we are on a destination to a historical uh, study grounds, one of the most important study grounds in the nation. But again, I couldn't get to, or like I said, it would be a disservice to have uploaded that material without uploading the journey and the builds and the conversations that we have with the locals on the way there. So this is another build with a brother that was from the region out of respect, you know, for, for being in the region and having spoken to different people. I have to upload this as well as a part of it. And then next, part four, excuse me, on part four, we're going to get into a lot of different references and study material. This is a general build, of course. There'll be study material within this, but uh, this is more so edited based off the conversation with this particular brother. So I hope y'all enjoy. I trust y'all enjoy. And uh, stay tuned for part four, Mantis Views 29. Peace, y'all. And it's, it's funny because I have this conversation with my friends all the time, right? Uh -huh, and they right. want me to shut up, but I actually want to talk to people That's about it. You know right. what I'm saying? It's like I got due diligence, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm excited uh -huh. that you guys are even looking for something because it's, it's, it's just encouraging for me. You know what I'm sure, saying? So that's, sure. that's good. But I would definitely, I would definitely check out this week. That's what's up. Rosie Canal. So I'll go back. Yeah. The original slaves were Europe. That's when we just uh, uncovered the slavery was really the Slavics were, which were modern European slaves born here from Europe, and that the whole slave thing, their reconciling, the reconciliation, we reconcile with the quote unquote African Americans. Once reaching the northern riverbank, the trail then follows a route through the slave markets and auction houses of Richmond. Beside the reconciliation statue. They got that reconciliation statue right there. Comm commemorating the International Triangular Slave Trade and onto the site of the notorious Lumpkin Slave Jail and leading onto Richmond's African burial ground, once called the burial ground for Negroes and the first African Baptist Church, a center of African American life in pre-Civil War Richmond. The natives here. So it's just proof that they, after they got their freedom, right, from the declaration, they started to they continue the slave trade. Yeah. Do you think it's still going on today? Uh, it's, it's, it's still slavery. Uh, in a different way. Uh, I would say like, like the fashion, like you know, black people, young black people like to keep up with like, this what they shortens and stuff like that. I just feel like, this is giving that mentality, mentality that they have to have it, but you don't have to have that to live life. It's going to be how better to wear clothes you want, or whatever. You know I mean, I got, I was one of them young dumb ones that wanted everything, wanted Gucci. In correlation with what this brother was saying about, he used to be one of the ones that wanted Gucci. I can't forget, in 2019, Gucci released this sweater with so-called blackface as well as the governor of Virginia was found out to have done this in his time and it reminds me of a important fact being as though we are at so-called Richmond or near Richmond Shaco Bottom area so-called Virginia I wanted to go back into the historical psychology of this particular aspect of people whereas Yaffa Bay broke this down either in the fall of Rome or in piercing the fog, people don't imitate what's inferior. So let's take a look at Jay Rogers, Nature Knows No Color line, right? And in here on page 87, he goes into this and he says, quote unquote, white people black in their faces, not only for the Moors dance, but because of attraction for a dark skin. McGritchie says many British peoples of fair complexion were accustomed to blacken their faces artificially that they might the better pass for Moors.
To understand this fully, one must divest himself of all notions of the American dogma of color superiority. So I say that to say that when you see the governors of Virginia and Gucci doing this, keep in mind psychologically that for them, they're imitating something superior. I was one of them young dumb ones that wanted everything, wanted Gucci and all this, until I noticed, I mean, it's not, it's not what you wear, it's how you wear it, and right I mean, how you portray yourself. So you think we became economic slaves more so? Uh, we became, yeah, slaves in that, slaves in music. Uh, these young kids, like, they're going crazy with these guns. And they listen to the music now. The music's different from the 90s when I grew up. Like, we had some wild street music, but it's, it's like more killing them. More like selling drugs. Now, so now, this, now these kids out here really think they really have to live this life when you can be a doctor, lawyer. We need more black lawyers, doctors, judges, instead of people just trying to run the streets, sell a couple of bricks, go to jail, get locked up, get killed. Black people, they don't want to work together. So I was talking to my father-in-law about uh, basically we need to get together buy a bunch of properties down Chicago because white people take it off. This is the number two. This is listed as a national treasure. Shaco Bottom is listed as the 11th most endangered historical place yeah. in, in the world. I would, in say America. It's like, I would say this whole area down here is history, but you would never know unless you know the buildings before that, before that, and before that. And that because they keep building up stuff like new apartments, you know, mm -hmm. could be dead bodies. So, right. So, I don't know, it's just crazy out here. Yo, we and, think and you Richmond much, is bro. just getting worse on now, bro. I know right. it was a lot of crazy stuff when I was growing up, murders, but stuff that's going on now is ridiculous. Like, you can't have a family cookout without somebody shooting. Without something. Yeah, well, you know, you reminded me of the days when I came up that we could have, uh, Parties at the home. Yeah. Now people don't respect you know, the home or others, and that and you can't do it. So it's like pushing everything into yeah, my, uh, frustration my for them. My mother and my mother-in-law actually told me how like Richmond actually was when they were growing up. They said it wasn't like that much black on black hate. You know what I mean, it was maybe a few, but it wasn't as much as it is now. Like, so I find it crazy. So. I, most of the time, like, I don't even really have that many friends and stuff, but the friends I do have, we all link up when we can, but most of the time we're working, like, right. we don't run the streets and stuff no more and stuff. We've been right. past that stage and stuff. We noticed that was dumb, that we wasted all that money that we could have been saving up buying a building down here. Like, True indeed. And I told, I told my wife, that's my vision, like, I don't care if I have a nice black-owned bar, like, to have, like, just mainly black, you know what I mean? Just to bring black people back, like, from all the negative stuff. I just don't want to have the negative stuff. Like, we want to get the fight. And mm -hmm. I think get the fight. They don't, well, they don't even fight no more. They just go straight to shooting, the arguing to shoot. The There's no more fight no more. Word. I haven't seen a fight since I was... <laughs> uh, that's real. High school. I want to say, like, 2005. Mm -hmm. That's the last, like, real fight I ever seen. Most people I know, they just, they got guns. Right. So it's like, do you carry, do you, do you have to, you know what I mean, should you carry a gun? Cause you fear for your life out here in these streets that you never know who's gonna run up on you. I said this looks similar to the truck when we were at the um, hotel uh -huh. and they pulled up to pick up some people yes. and uh, the, the, the European got out and he had open carry at his gun showing. Yeah. Just a civilian. Yeah. Exercising yeah. the right, constitutional right. To, to, to firearms, the Second Amendment, and what it had, what our people is because of our beliefs that these uh, municipalities and their policy enforces with law. Mm -hmm. When they said, "Oh," uh, when they said, "Oh," uh, turn in your guns, yeah, and we'll give you two hundred dollars or whatever the reason they gave, mm -hmm. or just believing that you don't have a right to mm -hmm. to carry arms. Just to make it abundantly clear for the record, we're not trying to say that everybody should grab arms tomorrow 
and if you don't grab arms, you're not an American type of thing. That's not what we're saying. On our sojourn on the Richmond Slave Trail for historical intents and purposes, whether we like it or not, firearms and the right to bear arms is inscribed in United States history. And again, on this Richmond Slave Trail, which we'll catch up to as the documentary unfolds, it speaks about the use of arms and Frederick Douglass gives his opinions about it and things of that nature. But we'll get to that as this series unfolds. This is just a bill with the brethren on their way to our destination. So just whether we like it or not, you know, the right to bear arms is definitely something that is inscribed in so-called United States history. All right. Now the trick to that, the trick to that is that they'll trick you and they'll tell you somehow on a municipal level to admit to having a weapon or even a gun. Mm -hmm. Your right says arms. Yeah. Of which a firearm or a handgun is arms. Mm -hmm. A handgun is armed, but they make it a charge of having a gun because you know it is in the words. Trust and believe. It is. That's jurisdiction. That's what it is. And it's essence. Do you carry a gun? Because you feel for your life out here in these streets because you never know who's going to run up on you and yeah. you're walking with your family and they just trying to rob you and shoot all you. So. We pull guns on each other, are we still peoples? If you strapped and I'm not strapped, we still equal They say don't carry guns cause guns real lethal But guns don't kill people, people kill people Do you think that stems from a lack of knowledge of self, thus creating a self-hate? I, I think it's, it's just I wanna say it's, it's a lot of um, People wasn't raised right Like they True. stop the values of family yeah. Uh, you know, the family don't stick together no more. Like, right, right, right. the only family, I, there's a few families that don't stick together. Like, I stayed with my wife's family, and her dad, he's real strong willed, and he was, he's about, you know what I mean, family oriented stuff. Like, mm. we do things together. We, we mm. struggle, we all struggle together. It's not no, I got this much money, and right. I'm gonna leave y'all out. Yeah. If you don't yeah. got it, we don't got it, so it's just. There it is. I like that. Now, let me ask you this. Why do you think our people think that we're black when our skin is brown? Do you think that was a mental conditioning? <sighs> the, the color thing is just crazy because, um, like, the, the more I done live, live life, it's like they try to put the light skin, dark skin, brown skin. And I, I just feel like we all, you know, we all the same. Uh, mm -hmm. if you, you're not black, you're white. It's, it's how I feel, but we always black at what? some point. So Can I share this yeah. with you real quick? Yeah. Would you mind just reading that? That's the definition of American. If you don't mind, just you can read that into the camera and, to yourself. An Aboriginal mm -hmm. or one of the various copper colored natives found on the American continent by the Europeans, the original application of the name. Fact. Mm. So now, Americans. who fits that phenotype? Native Americans. So would you, you don't, you don't I think? I mean, copper, you know. Um, it said various copper various complex. Copper. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would say that's everybody. That's uh, all honestly, of for real, uh, I would say the Mexicans. Yes, indeed. On the note of Mexicans, keep in mind this is a mat that aired on the commercial from Absolute Vodka. It didn't get any airtime dealing with the uh, U.S. board uh, within the so-called United States borders and boundaries. But they showed the map of how Mexico was more than what you think or more than what you see on the map today. So Mexico was way bigger than that. And indeed... Mexicans are in fact Americans. Uh, Puerto Ricans too, like. But at us, all, right? Yeah. yeah. And those who call themselves black. Yeah. They're, they're the, what that definition shows you is that they are the Aboriginal people to this land. And then when you read the history, which is much here, um, they say they found copper colored people. That's a dark skinned people here when the English settlers came. 
and then they named them Indians, right? Yes. But they're not Indians because no. this is not Indian. India. All right, so then back to the definition of the Americans, because we know it's not Europeans, what we call white people. They are not the original Americans, period. We know that. They don't hide that. They say they came over yeah. boats. Came over but they flip the script and say you did, yeah. right? Yeah. So now the definition tells you that the Americans or the natives, when you say natives, we have to start including ourselves. Yeah, basically. We but, are the Americans. But the thing is, they don't include us in they that, in that category. He said they don't include us in that category, which is effectively slavery, whereas when we look at the definition of freedom, it says the state of being free, liberty and self-determination, absence of restraint, the opposite of slavery. And the emphasis here is self-determination, meaning if you've done the study and you know that you're not, you know, a color code, a crayon color, um, and, and you've determined for yourself who you are because you know, you know, that's the aspect of self-determination and anybody who doesn't respect that is effectively imposing slavery on you. So keep in mind, the biggest part of freedom is self-determination. They don't, right? Yeah. Purposely, right? Because they know what who we are. They, they try know. to split us all up in different categories of The reason why 20 years we're called Negroes, another 20 years colored people, then Afro-Americans, then African-Americans, because we haven't accepted who we are, we yeah. don't know who we are, so therefore they will call us what they want to call us to keep us away from yeah. the fact that we are the Aboriginal people on this land that you're standing on, yeah. all right? So we have to clear that up and say we're the American yeah. natives. And we're not foreign natives, to this land, this is our yeah. home. Now there's some that may have later come, you know, after they did, uh, went over to the coast, after they got free, because they're the original slaves, right? Modern year paper slaves. And then, after they got free, they wanted to continue slavery on us. They, some went over to the coast of Africa with some of our, they look like us, they helped them enslave us, yes. all right? But we need to, as you just said, we need to know, when we say Native Americans, we're talking about us, that's why we need that definition. That's in the dictionary from uh, 1836 and 1928. As I was zoning out to the sign, paying attention to the area, the sign that says Baldwin and Brown, 1557 hardware. I wasn't sure if 1557 was the address or the year. However, being in the second largest slave trading spot in the history of North America or dealing with the United States, I couldn't help but to think about James Baldwin's classic speech on how he became Baldwin's nigger, whereas in this particular lecture, which I esteem as a classic, he went into the fact that he recognized that he was American via a trip to Europe at a British museum. But also he realized too that Baldwin was in his name. So out of respect, I'll roll a short clip of that particular lecture on the Quad Centennial. Because when I became Baldwin's nigger, it's also very important to point out, I was handcuffed to another man from another tribe whose language I did not speak. We did not know each other. And we could not speak to each other because if we could have spoken to each other, we might have been able to figure out what was happening to us. And if we could have figured out what was happening to us, we might have been able to prevent it. We would have had, in short, um, a kind of solidarity, which is a kind of identity, which might have allowed us, uh, which might have made the history of slavery very different. History of slavery in, in the North American continent, I mean. Well, that didn't happen, and here we are. That's the truth. It says the original application. Yeah. Well, we know more than Europeans aren't Americans. Yeah. We know that. But they call themselves that, don't they? Yeah. Because you know they're stealing your birthright. Dude. Thanks, fam. Because I was, it's just, uh, cause, cause I just find it funny how people are not from here. They'll come here and they can make millions, make all the money they want, but we've been here forever. And, we, and guess what? Those people who come, they have nationalities. They know who they are. They have a family. They make sure that no one infringes upon their birthrights. 
they know they can come. Yeah, they, they got, probably got plenty of documentation. You don't have to have documentation to be who you are. Yeah. You were born who you are. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You were born who you are. But when there's a system that was put in place to tell you, hey, you're a Negro, and then you accept it, yeah. there's no place for a Negro in the family of nations. And I got to add on here, too, when she says there's no place for Negroes in the family of nations, this is a fact. And again, this is uh, in retrospect. Uh, the Negro, excuse me, the Negro laws of South Carolina, the Negro laws of South Carolina, article, I mean, chapter one, section four, it says the term Negro is confined to slave Africans, the ancient Berbers and their descendants. It does not embrace the free inhabitants of Africa, such as the Egyptians, Moors, or the Negro Asiatics, such as the Lascars. So when we say, and when Noble Dry Lee left the lesson, you know, that we are not Negroes. And then the man said that the, the five principles was about love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, having already emphasized that freedom is self-determination, all right? then you can see how when they try to classify people as Negroes that was still attaching the badge of slavery to them. So this is, this is why historically, like if you try to identify something, identify with something in retrospect, what negative energies are you attaching to yourself? Because it was well known even in the Americas, these are the Negro laws of South Carolina. And it says the term Negro is confined to slave Africans, not free Africans. And it's just interesting that, you know, the examples of the free inhabitants of Africa included Egyptians and Moors. So, you know, when we say we're Moors, we're effectively disclaiming any badges or attachments to slavery, which of course, it's still going on in the 21st century. So this is why it's important to know and be thyself. No nation call. Please call Negro. Negro Junior. Negro Junior. Color Negotia. None of that exists anywhere on the land now. But the American, the, the, the original, I got it. Thank you. As I just told you. So that means they're not. You are. Oh, no, excuse me, pardon me. Yeah, huh? yeah you good. Go you can go right through it. Yeah. It's all right. So, that's why we do that. And then we say, well, they don't say that we are. And we have to learn to stop thinking that what they say is about really your truthful story. Because they're telling the history even here from their perspective. Yeah. All right? Like, it's great because I go around and look at all the freedom, all the history. Yeah, you seen them all. You walk around. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Like how they word stuff. Hey. And I don't like it. Like I, I didn't like. <laughs> I, I didn't. I, I, I don't understand. Like, so I post it on Facebook. Somebody else, you know, brush it off, stuff like that. But I'm like, yo, do you know what this means? Like, you know what they're saying? Like, actually saying. Like, if you're the only one, be the only one, and do it anyway, because you have to follow the dictates of your soul. And, and for your family and your children and so on, posterity. You have to tell the truth, even if no one else was. Hand the truth in until it is a part of everything. And I know others will make you feel like, oh, like you said, they'll post it or they'll wipe it off or whatever, because they're not in that place. They don't want to be in that place. So remember what Harry and Tubman said? I could have freed a lot more people if they had known the words later. That's what that's about. You just follow the dictates of yourself and keep wow. the truth. Thank you, bro. We're going to keep it moving no, at this he, point. He, he take, there's a parking ticket, right? Hey, man, all I can say as far as those parking tickets go, for those who know or don't know, Article 1, Section 10 of the Constitution states that states can't make anything but gold and silver coin a tender and payment of debts. That's the constitutional law and from my studies an unconstitutional law is not a law uh, my reference is the Institutes of American Law by John Bouvier enumeration 103 so 
and of course multiple case laws and Supreme Court rulings and things of that nature. So I don't knock anybody how they live, but for those who may get bills imposed on them, just remember the law of the land. That's a whole nother game, right? Yeah. Do you get paid for helping people out? No, that's what's crazy about it. They don't feel like that. Um, and it's other companies that do. Well, you should. Because it's, it's inspiring. So let, let me ask you this. You're dealing with parking and traffic and all of that. A yeah. Lot of, yeah, my fault. Yeah, A lot of the time, like dealing with parking and traffic and all of that, a lot of the times, you know, some people feel really free and they be like, look, nah. like they, they, they'll be like, you know, we've made these roads and all of that. But looking at this, it doesn't, this looks very ancient. Yeah. Do you think that a lot more of the roads in the world were like this and just covered up? Like these are actually ancient paths? What yeah, do you most think? Them, uh, I feel like most of them are, uh, especially in the game. Right. So most of them was created by us. For real. Yeah, they said Rob Williams was Rob Williams. That was 95 back in the day. Rob Williams. Most of them was created by us. For hmm. real. What's this Rob talking about? Uh, on, Luke. Hold on. Yo. Hold on. You want to read on. this one, Cuz? Wait, I, I, I got to get my flashlight. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Yeah. So that the road now known as Tyron Street. Tryon. Tryon Street mm -hmm. was once an Indian trading path which stretched over eight hundred miles from the Cherokee Nation in the south God to damn. the Iroquois mm -hmm. in the north. Mm -hmm. It was known as the Great Warrior's Path. The Iroquois Path or the road to the Catawba Nation. Okay. Having already defined the definition of American in this pristine context, I want to take a look here and share my book research as well from the book called Pictorial History of America by S.G. Goodrich. This book is about 820 something pages. But then it has an appendix book attached that's called Aborigines of America. And that book within this book is 48 pages. However, on page 24, correlating what we read off the Ashlar on the uh, Iroquois path known as the Great Wagon Road, etc. It says the most remarkable, however, of the northern antiquities are the mural remains of ancient fortifications which abound throughout the western states. Some of these contain many acres of land comprising walls, ditches, mounds, causeways, towers, gateways, terraces, pyramids. Vestiges of whole towns are discernible in many places with streets and squares laid out in perfect regularity. Right. The road now known as Tyron Street, Tryon, Tryon Street, mm -hmm. was once an Indian trading path which stretched over 800 miles from the Cherokee Nation in the south God to damn. the Iroquois mm -hmm. in the north. And I'm emphasizing streets and squares laid out in perfect regularity correlating with the, the path that they say is an Indian trading path, but if you watch part one of this, I clarify from ancient and modern Britons that the so-called Indians were actually Moors. Um, over time, the path became a major or artery of commerce in the American colonies known as the Great Wagon Road. It stretched from Philadelphia to the back county of North and South Carolina. This section of the road was named uh, Tryon Street in honor of Colonel William Tryon, the royal governor of North Carolina from 1765 to 1771. Facts, now put it on the native. That's what it is. That's, that's what it is right yeah. there. Yeah. It's the most wow. for sure, because Indian is definitely a brand name they gave us. Most of them was created by us, for mm -hmm. real. 
it, um, it was created by. That was hard work. Right. I just seen a, you know, the construction guys uh, picking up rocks and stuff, and I had sat there and thought like, you know, I wonder how many, how many people it took to build a road. Yeah, because like, like these that's like, stone, stone. That's like real slave work, but it's a heavy rock. Like, it's not, yeah. not light. Yeah, like these stones like are literally stones single. Are about that some thing. of them are about that big though. Yeah. Like you said, some of them. Yeah. Are, yeah like when you was walking up, you actually kicked one of them up off the ground on accident. Because it's real like that. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and they don't really get damaged to keep them up. But yet they want you to pay the road. Yeah. The point is, too, these are ancient roads. They really don't have to Peace. So this pretty much concludes part three in the build with this brother. And part four, we're going to get into some historical facts. Um, so I trust y'all enjoy it. And I'll give you a preview on the way out. Peace. Oh, yeah, here it is. Here's the truth about it. So, built on the northeast corner of Franklin and Mayo Streets, the Oddfellas hosted all manner of events on its stage. Opera performances, dance ensembles, and the occasional visit by General Tom Thumb, the famous midget. In the basement, another popular activity took place, the auctioning of slaves. Announced by hanging a red flag on the basement door, these open sales of men, women, and children led to an annual dispersion of over 40,000 blacks throughout the slave trading states in antebellum years. Life is an open door. Mm -hmm.